Praise God. Welcome to Third Heaven Ministries, everyone. We're coming to you live on Sunday afternoon from Woodbridge, Ontario. Father, we just thank you for everyone watching today, Lord God. We pray that you pour out your spirit upon all flesh today, Lord God. Open heavens, we pray for everyone watching, Lord God. Fill their homes to overflowing, Lord God. Expand their capacity to receive from you. Just receive the power and anointing and agape love of God. As he opens up the floodgates, thank you, Lord God. Open up the floodgates in abundance today upon your people, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for your love and power and a sound mind upon your people. Father God, just let it rain, Father God. Rain in the spirit upon your people today, Lord God. Bless them indeed. Enlarge your territory. Keep them from all evil, Lord God. Empower your people. Fire them up, Lord God. Spark a fire in your people. Intensify the fire of the Holy Spirit upon your people, Lord, upon the body of Christ, Lord. Everyone watching today, Lord God, flood, flood them with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Flood them in, in, in their homes, in their cars, wherever they're watching from, on their cell phones, Lord God, and smartphones. Father God, just release the power and anointing of your Holy Spirit. The anointing which breaks every yoke, Lord God. Destroy every yoke today, I pray, Father, in Jesus' holy name, because your word is like a hammer which breaks the rock in pieces, Lord God. I thank you, Father God. Your word is shut up in their bones, Father God, like a fire, Lord. Hallelujah. For the prophet Jeremiah, Lord God, the weeping prophet, Lord God, who cried out for Israel, Father God, and you heard his cry, Father God. We pray, we cry out for souls today, Father God. We cry out for souls, save your lost sheep, Lord God, your, your children, Lord God. My goodness, Lord, you will leave the 99 just to go find that one lost sheep, Lord God. For you are the great shepherd, and it is your will that none should perish, but all should come to eternal life, Lord God. So we cry out for souls, Lord God. Save your people today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Release your angels, Father God, to camp around your people, Lord God. Divine protection, we pray, Father God. Hallelujah. Whatever it is you need today, we release healing, Father God. In Jesus' name, by your stripes, they are healed and made whole. Just receive. Open up your hearts to receive and, and ask what it is you need of God today. Worship him first. Worship him and exalt him. We, we acknowledge you, Father God, and, and, and throne you as King of kings and Lord of lords over third heaven ministries today. Father God, let your people have an encounter with the living God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord God, the God of Israel. We call upon you now, Lord God. We lift up our eyes to the hills from whence does our help come from. It comes from the Lord God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He who watches over Israel does not slumber nor sleep. He who watches over Israel will be your shade at your right hand. Hallelujah, Lord God. The sun will not scorch them by day, nor will the moon harm them by night. Thank you, Father God. Bless your holy name, Lord God. We, ma we magnify you today, Lord God. Exo glorify your name through us today, Father God. We humble ourselves. We come to your throne of grace and humility, Lord God, but also in boldness and confidence. For your word says the righteous shall be bold as a lion. Father God, we ask for forgiveness, Father God, and, and cleansing and purification, Father God. If there's any unforgiveness in our heart, now is the time to ask God to remove it. Just say, Father God, I forgive anyone that I need to uh, forgive and release any unforgiveness out of your heart. Take it away, Father God. Hallelujah. We repent of any pride, any fear, any phobias, Lord God, and envies and jealousies and shame and guilt and condemnation. Remove it all, Father God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the spirit of love, the spirit of shalom, peace, and healing and health. Let your uh, healing um, the virtues flow, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We repent of all hate and selfishness, and worry, and anxiety, and sickness, and illnesses, Lord God. Remove all sin from our lives, Father God. And any doubt and disbelief, we repent and renounce of it now, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Take away all stress, Lord God, and, 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 and any lies and deception. We renounce every lie, every deception, Father God. Any confusion, gossip, and strife, procrastination. My goodness, thank you, Lord God. We repent and renounce that in Jesus' name, in the spirit of lust and greed. We renounce that, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for a cleansing today, Father God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sins of the world. We thank you, Father God, that as we come to you in prayer and fellowship today, Lord God, that you're creating in us a new heart, a steadfast spirit. Renew our minds, Father God. Yes, Lord God, wash our minds with the washing of the water of the word, Lord God. My goodness, I just see the water pouring out, Lord God. Even out of our belly shall flow rivers of life giving water. Hallelujah. Thank you for showing me that vision, Lord God, of the water constantly pouring down on Niagara Falls, Lord God. It never ends, Lord. It's a never-ending downpour. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You're showing me, Lord God, your throne of grace, Lord God, and it's consistently 
infinite power flowing from your from your throne of grace, Father God. Your, your mercies are new every single day. Hallelujah, Lord God. Tap into his mercy. Receive his mercy. Receive his forgiveness. Receive his love. You're, you're born again of the spirit. You already have the spirit of the living God, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. But I pray, Father God, that the Holy Spirit within your people today will manifest in their soulish realm. Hallelujah, Lord God. Will heal the motions, Lord God. Hallelujah. Will renew their minds, Father God. Yes, Lord God. That there be a tangible presence today, Lord God, of your power and your might. Touch your people today, Lord God. Heal them. Deliver them. Set them free, Father God. And give them your shalom peace and health, wealth, and prosperity today, Father God. As we establish your kingdom in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. For all of you watching live, just say, I establish the kingdom of God in my life today. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. We give you all the praise, Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Praise God. Let's open up our Bibles. We're going to get right into the word today. And the message, the sermon today is called The Seven Churches of Revelation. So open up your Bibles to Revelation chapter 1. Wow, praise God. I just feel God is still ministering to If you have any prayer requests, let us know. We're going to pray at the end of the service, or even if a word of knowledge or prophetic is, is, is activated, uh, we're going we're gonna to uh, pray for you even during the service here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, I just pray that the gifts be activated today, Father God, and you'll meet every need of everybody watching, Lord God. I know you just want to pour out your love in a greater measure. I just see buckets being poured out in the spirit, Lord God. My goodness. Like I said, God's throne of grace is a never-ending power supply. My goodness, you just need to plug in, hallelujah, plug in to the third heaven and you'll get the infinite power, infinite dunamis power, infinite exousia authority, hallelujah, whatever it is you need. If you need his agape love, it's infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, whatever it is you need from God, that shalom peace like a river, you can receive it today because it's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing. Just say, I receive, I receive it, I receive it. Hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. We need, wow, thank you, Lord. Just like an antenna can receive uh, uh, signals. My goodness, thank you. What I see, hallelujah, praise God, is electric magnetic fire signals. Hallelujah, I see fire flowing like electromagnetic signals in the, in the airwaves. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Cleanse and purify. Thank you, Lord God, for that word today, Lord God. I know that the blood of Jesus cleanses us as white as snow, Lord God. The blood that was shed, Father, my goodness, even though our sins were as red as scarlet, you washed them as white as snow, Lord God. But I also see the fire of the Holy Spirit being released as through the as electromagnetic airwaves is the best way I can describe it in the natural, Lord God. But touch your people today, Lord God. Let them be set ablaze on fire. Ignite them, Lord God, for your kingdom plan and purpose in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Praise God. I want to get into the word today, but I just feel like I had to release that for someone watching. If you've been touched by the Holy Spirit, uh, let us know. Give us some feedback. Share with your friends. Click on share. And, and feel free to put Revelation uh, chapter 1 in the comment section. And this is the Apostle John writing from the island of Patmos, uh, the Greek island. He says, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. Now you have to understand when God is speaking, a thousand years for God is like one day. So what you have to understand that when God is speaking from his perspective, when he says he's coming soon, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years, that's all soon for God. That's like one, two, or three days. So you have to understand that when God is speaking, we cannot try to use the natural mind to understand what God is saying. We have to understand by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit within us can give us the proper revelation and knowledge. And the Apostle John said, he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one, verse 3, who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Praise God. In God's timing, it is near. Praise God. And it is. And it says, anyone who hears the words that we are speaking aloud is blessed. So you are blessed today because we are preaching this word. And that's why we have to preach the word. For So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as we preach the word aloud, uh, it, 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 we are blessed by it. But we have to take it to heart, it says. Not only hear with our ears, 
Whew, hallelujah. Thank you for that revelation, Lord God. Not only do we hear the word of God with our ears, but it can't just be a mind. It has to go down to our heart. Hallelujah. We cannot just intellectually grasp the word of God. It has to be uh, discerned in the spirit. And it has to have an effect in the heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 4 says, John said to the seven churches in the province of Asia, which is also called Asia Minor, which is uh, modern day Turkey, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits, wow, before his throne. Hallelujah. We talked many times about the third heaven in John chapter 4. There's seven lampstands or spirits of God before his throne. And, and it says, from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love this title because John the Apostle is ascribing deity and divinity to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of the fact that no prophet was ever given the, this, this the title, the ruler of the kings of the earth. Praise God. You cannot be called the ruler of the kings of the, of the earth unless you are truly the Messiah, the Son of God, and the Father and the Son are one. So Jesus Christ is, 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 is called the ruler of the kings of the earth. No other prophet has ever given that title. Hallelujah. So I want to make that very clear because... Uh, let me continue reading to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and father to him be glory and power forever and ever amen look he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him hallelujah pierced him and all the peoples on earth will mourn because of him so shall it be amen I am the alpha and the omega says the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty, praise God. So here we see Revelation chapter 1. John the Apostle is ascribing deity and divinity to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's throughout the whole Bible. John chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. And again, here in Revelation chapter 1, we see that Christ is clearly identified as the Messiah written in the Old Testament, the Torah, and all the Hebrew prophets wrote about the coming Messiah and Jesus Christ of Nazareth fulfilled every single one of the 300 prophecies. And I'm trying to make this as clear as possible today because if there's any other religion out there that tries to say that, that Jesus Christ is anything but the Son of God, they are in error and they have to repent and turn to God and ask for forgiveness because God has one plan of salvation for the entire planet. And, and that's the difference between Christianity, which is not really a religion, but if you look at Christianity as a religion, you can say it's the only religion in the world that has a savior and talks about salvation. No other religion in the world talks about savior or salvation because they don't have that solution. God alone, that's his God's plan. And so God has one plan for all mankind, and that's how you can tell false doctrine and false religion from truth. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is the only true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. His name is Yahweh, yad heh vav -Heh in the Hebrew. And he has many other names which we've discussed many times. Adonai, El Shaddai. And I'm making this as clear as possible that any other religion which does not identify Jesus Christ as the Son of God is Antichrist spirit. And we repent, Father. We renounce it. We bind the Antichrist spirit. And we loose it off your people, Father, today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. No one can say they know God and they don't know God's plan of salvation for the whole world. If you know the Son, you know the Father. If you know the Father, you know the Son. So no one can say they, they know God and then they don't even know who his Son is or they don't know his plan of salvation. That was the greatest gift God gave to humanity. God, for God so loved the world that he gave us his Son to pay the full price of sin. And this is why, again, all the other philosophies and man-made doctrines and traditions, they do not describe what sin truly is and what is the ramification of sin and why that if God who is holy were to judge any single person on planet earth, everyone would be going to hell based on our own merit. We cannot save ourselves. Even the Hebrew prophets cried out to God, please take not that Holy Spear for me. Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. So woe is me. He, he said, I am ruined when he saw the, the glory, the, the train of the, <laughs> the, the Lord's robe fill the temple, the glory of God. My goodness, praise God. So you can see that this, uh, Christianity is the only, again, it, it's a relationship. It's not really a religion, but because people call it a religion, I'm going to say it's the only religion 
that is about having a relationship with the creator of the universe. And again, there's many names for God, but uh, some of the names you hear out there are not the proper names, and we'll get into that another time. But here we see that Jesus Christ is clearly one with God the Father. And, and even um, it, John says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So you can see clearly John chapter 1 describes deity and divinity to Christ. And anyone who rejects the finished work of the cross or the blood of Jesus is in error. And they're not saved. They're not born again. They don't even know God. That's all I'm going to be as strict, I mean, as, as bold as I can or direct as I can today. I'm challenging every other person out there uh, trying to preach any other message or any other religion. Uh, you still have time to repent and be saved and, and accept the creator of, of the universe because you will meet him one day. And let's hope you meet him now and have the encounter. Father, I pray for an encounter today with everyone watching, Father, that they will encounter the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. Hallelujah, the true and living God, the Almighty One, the Ancient of Days. Thank you, Father God, that people will encounter you now and be born again of the Spirit before it's too late and they end up in hell and there's no turning back. This is your only time to be saved. Uh, I don't know why I'm going there today, but I feel someone needs to turn from their evil, wicked ways. They need to humble themselves. And God loves you. He created you. He's your creator. He's your father. He loves you. God's love for you is unconditional. It's not based on our works or on our performance, because if it was, nobody would make it. It doesn't matter what religion, what culture, where you, what background you have. If it wasn't for God's grace and mercy, nobody would make it. And so that shows you that the true gospel message is that God is holy, we are sinners, and we need to come in humility and ask for his forgiveness. And he has done it already. He came down, he stepped off the throne of heaven and manifested as a child born in a manger, my God, the creator of the whole universe come into this world in the most humble manner possible in the form of the son, Jesus Christ. That's why he says the, 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 the word became flesh. That's it called the incarnation. The spirit of God took on human flesh and he lived for 33 and a half years or 33 whatever plus years and he fulfilled everything that was pre-written. Like I said, 300 prophecies of the Old Testament written about the Messiah, and the Messiah is, is God. Uh, you have to be very clear. Read Zechariah, read Daniel, all the prophetic books. Uh, we have a different name for the Son of God uh, and the Father and the Holy Spirit, but they are all one God, and you have to understand that they are God. They're not separate from each other. They're all one, but it's different manifestations of God or different persons is a better way to word it. It's a mystery again, but God the Father and God the Son have different roles. The Son is the Savior. He came into the world to save. He's the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. And, and, and this is why we call him Savior and Lord. And in the Bible, we have Lord, capital L-O-R-D, which refers to God the Father, I believe Yahweh, and then Lord, smaller, lowercase is Adonai, Master, Savior. And, and it all makes sense when you read the full book from Genesis to Revelation, it all, uh, um, uh, complements each other and and you can see that it's uh the same spirit that inspired every book of the bible praise god now let's keep reading here and uh why am i going there okay let's turn to first timothy chapter four for just a minute and i can say why it's so important for us to read the word of god every day to renew our minds for, so that the truth can set us free apostle paul wrote to timothy until i come Devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. So we should be devoting ourselves to the public reading of scripture and to preaching and teaching it. And I love preaching here on Sunday afternoon for one hour, but I'd rather all of you decide to come here on a Friday night and we'll spend two or three hours worshiping and reading the word of God. And everyone can get a turn to just publicly read the word of God. If we do that, my goodness, we will have the revival we're looking for. So give us some feedback. I know many of you are watching from different countries of the world. Praise God. We thank you for the revival in Indonesia. God bless you all there. We pray for India, Father, and China, and every other nation of the world, Father God, uh, the continent of Africa, Lord God, and Europe, and, and all of Asia, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that, Father, revival will hit every single nation of the world. We pray also for North America, Lord, for we are in desperate need 
of a great revival here, Lord, both in the U.S. and Canada and even in Mexico, Father God, and even down to South America, Father. We pray for a revival in the Americas, Lord God. Pour your fire, Lord God, and just do a mighty work, Lord God. We know you've already poured out your spirit, Lord God, on all flesh, and it's available for anyone who humbles themselves and receives him, Lord God. But we pray, Father God, for a greater manifestation, Lord God, a greater tangible presence that people can see how real and how alive you are. You're a living God, Lord. You're not far and distant. You are right there with them, Lord God. You're omnipresent, Lord God, and the kingdom of God is within us, Lord. So I thank you, Father, that people will look within and find you, Lord God, and, and, and receive you, Lord God. If they've never received you, it's so important. It's not enough to believe. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father God. I have to preach the gospel today because... Many people say they believe in God or they believe in Jesus, but they have never received his spirit into your spirit. That's the plan God had from the beginning is that he wants us to become one with him. And that's fellowship. That's communion. God doesn't want to be far away and, and, and leave us like abandoned children. That's not God's will. There's no father. We repent of abandonment, Lord. My goodness, take away that spirit of abandonment, Lord God. And what is that called? Uh orphan spirit my god father remove every orphan spirit from your people in this identity crisis my goodness there's a lack of identity today in the world and that's because people are not born again of the spirit once you're born again of the spirit your identity will be with your creator god through his son jesus christ and once you have that uh, proper identity you will no longer uh, identify yourself by your sexual orientation or the color of your skin or all these other things that people do uh, or by even by your culture or what country you're from. None of that matters when you're part of the kingdom of God because God is first in your life and you identify yourself as a child of God. And when you have that relationship and you're inherited into the, it, you, oh my God, thank you, Lord God, you're adopted is the right word. When you're adopted into the kingdom of God, you inherit all the blessings of the kingdom. And, and, and God said that meek shall inherit the earth. And, and one day you can experience the fullness of the salvation when we enter the third heaven, the place where God dwells. That's where God's throne is. But in the meantime, our, our spirit can be born again and, and, and be seated in heavenly places, which I believe means we can tap into God and have that personal communication and relationship with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's another revelation I'm just getting right now. Many people say they believe in God, but they have no personal communication with him. They don't hear his voice. Even if they're praying, it's just one-way prayers. And they don't listen and hear what God is saying to them. When you're born again with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit living in you, can help you communicate with the Father through the Son. And you can hear their voice. You can hear what they're saying. And that's the, ch the challenge I have for every other uh, 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 philosophy or religion out there which tries to talk about God, but they have no personal relationship. That's how you, 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 you expose the counterfeit from the reality, from the genuine, from the truth. Praise God. We're getting somewhere today. Hallelujah. We need to preach the truth of the gospel and, 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 and expose all false counterfeit religions which are not of God. And, and I'm going to leave it at that for today. But one day we're going to come back and revisit this. But here's what Timothy said. Uh, sorry, Paul said to Timothy, do not neglect your gift which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. See that? Watch your life and doctrine closely. Preserve in them. Sorry, persevere in them. Because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Hallelujah. This is why it's so important for us to live a holy, consecrated life in prayer and in the word of God. So that we can save both ourselves and those who hear us. Praise God. As we preach the word of God. So... Your doctrine is very important. Hallelujah. And, and, and I'm, I'm just going to go back to verse 13. It says that we should devote ourselves to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. So I'm going to challenge everyone. We started a 30-day Bible reading plan on Facebook. Just type in 30-day Bible reading plan, and we're going through the whole book of Proverbs and the whole book of Acts. And I guarantee if you take that 30-day challenge, your life will be transformed, and you will never be the same. Praise God. I was... Uh, um, I was inspired to do that because of a friend of mine who was here last week, and he said that, you know, his, uh, uh, I don't know if it's his brother-in-law or one of his friends is a fitness instructor, and he challenged him to eat no bread for 30 days, and uh, he said he did that, and he lost so much weight, and he, his health improved, and everything turned, turned around for him, 
and, and he said it was amazing. So he thought, wow, if he gave me a 30 day, uh, you know, uh, uh, diet plan, uh, he goes, I'm gonna give him a 30 day Bible reading uh, a challenge, hallelujah. And a 30 day going to church challenge, praise God. And so this is why we're doing this because you can, yes, take the 30 day diet plan and, and, and lose weight and transform your life physically, but how about you do some spiritual uh, <laughs> exercise here, praise God, and see your life be changed and transformed for the better spiritually. And only the word of God can transform you from the inside out, praise God. So there you go, that's a 30 day Bible reading plan. And I'm gonna do a little bit more of it right here as we get back to Revelation chapter one. In verse nine, it says, I, John, your brother and companion, in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was laid, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, praise God, right, uh, which said, write on the scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. And here he names the seven churches. Number one, Ephesus. Number two, Smyrna. Number three, Pergamum. Number four, Thyatira. Five, Sardis, six, Philadelphia, and seven, Laodicea. And now they're all located in modern day Turkey, which used to be called uh, Asia Minor. And you'll see that um, uh, 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 Ephesus is closest to the island of Patmos. And, and uh, the reason why that is first is if these letters, if this letter was going to be delivered, uh, that they're all in order according, if you look at a map, where all these cities are located in in modern day Turkey. And verse 12 says, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man. There you go again. It doesn't say that I saw someone who looked like a prophet. Son of man is a messianic term referring to the Messiah. We can call him son of God or son of man because God, because Jesus Christ had a human side, which was his humanity. But then he had his divine side, which is the divinity that we're talking about many times. And, and clearly the Bible, the word of God describes deity to Christ. And it says that you saw him dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. Praise God. Father, I pray you will give a vision to everyone right now that they will see the risen Christ in all his glory. Hallelujah. Father God, release that power and anointing and glory upon your people today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. If you get any dreams and visions, let us know. Praise God that we serve a supernatural God. And I've seen many times in the vision, the gold sash, praise God, around uh, 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 around the white robe, hallelujah, around his chest, praise God. It says the hair of his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were blazing eyes of fire. Hallelujah. Father God, let someone see the blazing eyes of fire, the risen Christ penetrating through. And, and oh, thank you, Lord. Your word is like, oh my God, it's a double-edged sword. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Penetrating through the dividing soul and spirit joints in the marrow. See, when you have an encounter with the risen Christ, who's seated at the right hand of the Father in the third heaven, that will change and transform your life. No amount of religion can do anything to transform you, but the word of God can transform you because it opens you up to the, the, the reality of who God is. And then you'll have a supernatural vision or an encounter or a touch of God. You have to read his word and meditate on it. And suddenly you'll say, my God, I, I can see what the word is saying here. And you'll have the same vision that the apostle John had here at the age of 90 or plus at the, uh, uh, on the island of Patmos. And uh, it says his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars Sorry, right hand, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. Wow, praise God. See, that kind of uh, 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 description can only be ascribed to God. God it says God dwells in unapproachable light. And here the Son of God is, is described as his face shining like the sun in all its brilliance. So when you can tap into the third heaven and see that the light of Christ is brighter than the sun, my God, it's, it's unapproachable light. And even the angels have to cover their eyes when they get close to the throne of God because of the brightness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for these visions you're showing your people. That just dreams and visions, I pray for your people tonight and today, Father God, let them operate in the supernatural, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 17, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. 
Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now, look, I am alive forever and ever. How would you like to have that experience that Apostle John had here of, 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 of being caught up to the third heaven? And he fell as at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And then the Lord puts his hand on him as to, to calm him down and say, Look, I'm alive. And he says, I hold the keys of death in Hades. Praise God. So that goes to show you that Christ has power over the over eternal life, over death and life. He's the only one who resurrected from the grave. And in, at three days, bodily resurrection, on the third day he rose again. And he spent 40 days walking upon the earth. And, and, and many people came out of their graves in Jerusalem at that time. <clears throat> Praise God. And I believe paradise was translated to the third heaven when Jesus rose on the third day. Praise God. And it's in Ephesians chapter 4, I believe which we talked about last time, and, and, and so much supernatural events took place. Uh, my goodness, thank you, Lord God. Whew, hallelujah. And so many supernatural events took place uh, after, on the third day, earthquake, and even after the third day, he did signs, wonders, and miracles for 40 days. He walked into the upper room right through the walls when they were you know, at the, sitting there at the table, and, 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 and Jesus ate with them. He says, look, Touch my hands to Thomas, who was the daughter. He said, you know, look at my side. And, and, and he was a he, he physically, bodily resurrection. Hallelujah. And then he finally ascended to the heaven on the 40th day. And then poured out his Holy Spirit on the 50th day, the day of Pentecost. And that was the birth of the new covenant. And the church has grown since then. Two billion Christians in the world today. Maybe 2.5 billion. We, we were grateful for the revivals going on in many nations of the world. And, and Christianity is growing, praise God, and people are being saved, born again, delivered, and transformed by God's word. Verse 19, write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later, the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars, everyone say the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So isn't this awesome that Christ is, is, is given this amazing revelation to the Apostle John. And you can also read Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 and Zechariah 12, 10. And you'll see how uh, similar uh, this wording is. The Ancient of Days was in Daniel chapter 7. That vision that Daniel saw is, is a, a very similar to what a, a John had in the New Testament. Praise God. Now we're going to get into the seven churches. And why is this so important? Is because I believe that the word of God usually has a dual meaning. Yes, John was writing to the existing seven churches at that time. But they no longer exist today. So I believe the way the word of God works, it was you know, written to the people of the time. But it was a prophetic word, which is for the churches today as well. And, and there's a lot we can learn from reading what, uh, uh, what, what the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to these di seven different churches. It was like what I call constructive criticism. It was great coaching and great mentoring because what Christ does is he, he shows them their uh, strengths and their weaknesses. And then he gives them an incentive for rewards by being obedient and doing the right thing. Praise God. So don't let anyone tell you that there's no works in the kingdom of God. <laughs> we are saved by grace, yes. Well, that's without a doubt. You cannot work for your salvation. We are saved by grace. But there's an obedience that comes as you grow in maturity. You know, when you're first born again of the Spirit, you're just like a, a, a child and you need to grow into spiritual maturity. So God has a lot more... How can I say this? Um, uh, mercy <laughs> on us when we're first children, like we're just crawling around still. But once you're you're giving more knowledge and more understanding, we have a responsibility. And so the works is not, it, it's being obedient to God and doing what the Father says. The same way the Son, Jesus Christ, he says, I only do what I hear my Father doing and I only say what I, I speak what I hear my Father saying. So that the works of the kingdom of God are being obedient to the to the principles, the kingdom principles, and the teachings and commandments of Christ. And Christ said, if you love me, you will follow my commands. And so we're going to get into that in John chapter 8 as well. But let's just read what he said to the church of Ephesus. Uh, 
He says, to the angel of the church in Ephesus write, the, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. So here again, is the verse 2 says, I know your deeds. See, when the Bible says deeds, it's like works, or uh, uh, another word is um, uh, like actions. You know, we cannot be just hearers of the word. We have to be doers of the word. So this is what will determine your spiritual maturity is if you actually do what God asks you to do or what the word commands us to do. So those are our deeds. Our deeds is like our, our works in the kingdom. And it even says your hard work in among and your perseverance. So the people in Ephesus did have some good uh, a report, but there was also a negative coming up. It says, I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. So at least the church in Ephesus was wise enough or spiritually mature enough to identify false apostles. And then verse 3 says, You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. So that's a great report. That's a strength of the church in Ephesus. But now look what the warning is uh, on their weakness. Verse 4 says, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your the love you had at first. And this happens many times in people in the churches today that we have forsaken our first love. So what is we have to do is repent. The verse 5 says, Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, uh, which I also hate. So there, that's... Uh, um, not a mixed message that's it got it, it, the Lord is showing the weakness and what they need to repent of which just means change so they were a little bit off course in that area and, and they needed to come back online back on track and and they hated the practices of the Nicolaitans Nicolaitans <laughs> uh, and it's a Greek word it's taken from the Greek word misleo which means to abhor to uh, or to utter to find utterly repulsive so I'm talking about the word hate now for Christ to say that he hates these practices of the Nicolaitans uh, is a strong word. And I'm just showing that to be utterly repulsive or to abhor, it's like loathing or animosity towards something. And it's more, it's a stronger than a dislike. And why? Because Christ is 100% true. He doesn't like when we mix any occultic practices or pagan root uh, uh, practices into the truth of the purity of God's word. Praise God. And so the Ephesus church did not like these practices either, and that's in their favor. Verse 7, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Hallelujah. Remember, there was two trees in the Garden of Eden. There was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that they were not supposed to eat from. And then there was a tree of life. So in the third heaven, in the paradise of God, when those who are victorious in this life will be given the right to eat from the tree of life. Awesome promises. Praise God. And there's a pattern to the way all the churches are given encouragement. Uh, they're shown their strengths and weaknesses. Um, and, and then some rewards for doing the right thing. Now, the, the challenge here is that out of all seven churches, only two of them get very good reports. All the other five are... Uh, not that great, actually, overall. And I'll tell you, the only two churches that got great reports are Smyrna and Philadelphia. Smyrna is chapter 2, and then we're going to get to Philadelphia in chapter 5, hopefully. Uh, sorry, chapter 3. So let me jump down now to the second church, which is verse 8. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Praise God. There's so much deep revelation here. My goodness. Uh, <clears throat> number one, sometimes you can be physically poor, but spiritually rich. And then sometimes people are spiritually poor, even though they're physically rich or naturally rich in, the, rich in the natural. So again, we have to rightly divide the word of truth. And here, I believe that they were spiritually rich is what Christ is saying to them, even though they're going through afflictions and some levels of poverty. But there's someone who's slandering this church in Smyrna. And who are they? They're people who call themselves Jews, but they're really not. They're a synagogue of Satan. 
Now that's another strict, or tough word, but that's what I love about Jesus Christ. He gives it to you right between the eyes and the truth. And, and yeah, it, it, you have to just accept what he's saying and repent when you're off track. There's so many people even, uh, I, I don't even know if I want to mention the name, but there's like a Hebrew roots movement or even a Hebrew Israelite movement. And, and some of these people I've met, they're like African Americans who claim to be Jews. <laughs> and it's amazing to me that they can be so deceived because number one, they can't speak Hebrew, they have no Jewish culture, and, and it's because of a lack of identity again. So if they were truly grateful or thankful of their own culture, which is African American, which is a great culture you should be thankful for. I mean, some of the best worshipers are from Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, all over. We have some of the best Christian worship music coming out of America, out of Africa. And so why would you call yourself a Jew when you're not? You don't have to pretend to be someone you're not because Christ calls you a synagogue of Satan because you think you're Jews, but you're really not. And it's a huge deception. Father, I pray you release people from that lying deception, Father God. Uh, only 1% or less of the world is Jew, and 99% are Gentiles or more. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you are the God of both Jew and Gentile. And, Lord God, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have come to bring and unite all this one in Christ, the Messiah. And so we should be thankful. I don't, I don't know if I want to use the word proud of our culture or our background, but we should be grateful and thankful of, of the great culture God has brought us from. And so we need to identify in Christ, in the kingdom of God, and there's nothing wrong with being a born-again believer. You don't have to say you're from one of the 12 tribes of Israel when you're really not. And even if you are, it doesn't matter. You have to accept Christ as personal Lord and Savior. Otherwise, it doesn't matter your genealogy. If you're not born again in the Spirit, you're still out of the kingdom of God. So there's no benefit uh, 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 to saying you're uh, you're in a certain camp or certain tribe and all that teaching that's going on. So I don't know, someone had to hear that today. Father, I pray the truth will set them free and they'll be grateful to be a child of God in the kingdom of God and be born again of the spirit. That is the only way. We renounce all false idolatry, all false teaching, all false doctrine in Jesus' mighty name. Wow, I'm going, I'm going up, not off topic, but I, I'm drilling down deeper here as I'm getting revelation here. Verse 10. Do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Now, that's a mystery to me. If someone can explain why 10 days, let us know. I haven't studied that yet, but I know that there are some people in the church in Smyrna did suffer persecution, and for up to 10 days, they were uh, some were put in prison. But it says, be faithful even to the point of death. And this is what I want to challenge the body of Christ today. Get yourself strong in the word. And filled with the Spirit, because no matter what is coming in the end times, we will be able to be faithful to Christ and and, and have our, our eternal reward in heaven for all eternity. Uh, and that's why some Christians are being persecuted all over the world, martyred for their faith, but they will receive a great reward in heaven because they did not uh, 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 give up or they did not turn away from their faith. It says, I will give you life as your victor's crown. Praise God. So he's referring to eternal life. So Christ alone, it says, do not be afraid of man who can only destroy your body, but be afraid of God who can destroy both body and soul in hell. My God, this is the fear of the Lord. We need the fear of God back in the church, my goodness, in the, in the world. Father, I pray for the spirit of the fear of the Lord to be released, Father God, upon your people, that they will honor and respect you and hold you in awe and reverence, Father God, for who you are, the creator of of everything, Lord God, the heaven and the earth, Lord God, and all uh, 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 kingdoms. And, and my goodness, thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. Verse 11, once again, the same thing. Every church gets this saying. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. Praise God. That's another teaching again for another time. The great white throne judgment. Um, I can only give you an overview right now because of time. Let me know if we're close to an hour, Andrea. We still have lots of time. She says, praise God. And oh, this is why Bible study is so important. We'll be here Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, we're here as early as like 6.30 on Wednesday night for prayer. But Wednesday nights from 7 to 9, we're going to be praying and getting deeper into the Word of God. And, and this is why I'm going to do my best to give you an overview. But some of these questions we're throwing out there. We're going to drill deeper into the Word of God through Bible study. Number three, 
the church in Pergamum. Verse 12 says, To the angel of the church in Pergamum write, These are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Wow, praise God. There's great revelation here. Number one is Antipas was a martyr of the early church. He, he was put to death in the city of uh, Pergamum. And, uh, uh, but praise God that he was a faithful witness. And uh, his reward is in the third heaven. Praise God. Now what it tells us is that this is where Satan's throne is. Out of all the seven churches, this is the only church in the city of Pergamum where Satan's throne is. And so we should know today that a lot of people are wondering about end time events. That uh, where is the Antichrist going to come out of? Most likely it will be Turkey. We pray, Father God, for revival in Turkey and for Christians in Turkey and believers and even non-believers. It says we have to pray even for those who persecute us. So, Father, we pray for their government and the leaders in Turkey, Father God, that they will once again become the Christian nation that they were in the first century with all these seven churches in this in the country of Turkey, Father God. I pray that there will be a great mighty move of the Holy Spirit in that country, Lord, and many will be saved. But I know according to Scripture, Father God, that Satan's throne is in that city, is in that country, Lord God, which is half in Asia and partly in Europe. It's the only country that's kind of in between Europe and Asia and, and called Asia Minor. So I thank you, Father, for the revelation now, Father God, that we know where Satan's throne is physically in the world, even though he's a spiritual being with a spiritual um, powers and principalities all across the earth. Father God, we, we renounce the kingdom of darkness. We ask, Father, for a mighty uh, outpouring and downpouring, Father God, of your spirit from the third heaven, which will crush and break every stronghold in the second heaven and, and have open heaven over everyone watching, Father God, that they will be able to receive freely and clearly from you, Lord God. Let him hear your voice today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. I'm just praying as we go here, and verse 14 says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, which was a seducing spirit. Father, we renounce all seducing spirits, and we repent of that. And Balaam taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin so that they ate food, sacrificed to idols, and committed sexual immorality. Father, we also repent of idolatry, which we've said here many times, Father God, the whole earth in many countries are steeped in idolatry. Father, we repent of that sin, Lord, and ask, Father God, that people will turn from their ways, burn up everything that is out of you, Lord God, as they did in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank you, Father God, for the revelation today, Father. And we renounce all sexual, sexual immorality, Father God, any occultic practices in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 15, likewise, you have also, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. So the church in Ephesus did the right thing by rejecting this teaching of the Nicolaitans. But now Pergamum was holding on to this wrong teaching. And we need to renounce all wrong teaching and false doctrine. Verse 16, repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Praise God. So again, these are Christian churches that Christ is speaking to. So imagine if he's saying this to the churches, that means there had to be some level of repentance that had to take place then and even now. Because remember, this is a prophetic book speaking to the churches and the Christians today, any believer, whatever you call yourself, if you're a child of God, you have to check your heart, your mind, and ask God for his grace and his mercy to cleanse you and forgive you as you repent of anything that is disobedient or contrary. My goodness, thank you, Father God. We're exposed all counterfeit, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. I love the, the message of grace that I hear a lot on the radio. But the thing that doesn't make sense to me is that if someone is believing a false doctrine uh, and they're saying, but you're saved by grace, um, the only way you can receive the grace is if you repent because you cannot believe, believe a lie and then say you're in right standing with God. So even if your doctrine is incorrect, the grace is says, repent and turn from your wrong way. So we have to ask God, search our heart, search our mind. Who can ascend the hill of the, of the Lord in Psalm 24? Except he who has clean hands and a pure heart. 
We have to check ourselves and be willing to say, okay, God, we're still learning. We messed up. We, we, we believe some wrong things. And we need to turn from them and ask God for his grace and mercy. And so, yes, the grace is there. But what I'm trying to say is we have to preach that grace message, I feel, properly uh, so that it's understood that there's something we have to do on our part to receive that grace. It, it's called repentance. Repentance is the key to revival. Repentance is the key to salvation. That's our part. We have to do something. Yes, we do. We're saved by grace, but only when you come to God in humility and ask for forgiveness and repent of our wrong thinking. And that's how you get born again and brought into the kingdom of God. And, and then there's a sanctification process, which is an ongoing renewing of the mind. So that's why when I use the word, uh, you know, you can say confess your sins, but I, I just use the word repent. What I'm saying is that once we receive the Holy Spirit, he's going to gradually start to renew our mind into the image of Christ. And, and it takes time because if it would all to happen so instantly overnight, it would be too much for us to handle. And even if you could handle it, um, um, it's just not reality, if that's the, the word I, I can use. So what I feel is sometimes we're preaching a message which is I find like it's idealistic, but it's not real. <laughs> it's not the real deal. Yeah, because anyone who's born again of the Spirit, whether it's one year, two year, 10 years, 30 years, you can see that there was a process you went through and there should be a gradual uh, a maturing or, or, or a growth. Thank you, Lord God, hallelujah. There has to be growth from year to year. So you should be able to look back, you know, five, 10 years later and say, my God, I've grown from when I was first born again to where I am now. Um, and, and so that's why salvation is a one-time event, but it's an, also an ongoing process. And that's all I mean by many times you have to cleanse yourself and I have a whole message called Fine Car Detailing Car Wash, I think is the message. Anyway, it has to do with that when you're born again, yes, you receive the Spirit of God, but you have to go through a cleansing and a purification. And, and, and like I said, this stuff takes time, even deliverance in many cases. Hallelujah. Verse 17, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. Praise God. That's a great promise. There's hidden manna in the third heaven, which God is about to give those who are victorious. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. That's amazing. Someone was asking, about, asking me about this last week. What is our new name? It says that those that are victorious... Uh, they will receive a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. So you alone will know it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, where are we? We're up to the, the third? No, yeah, one, two, third church. And now uh, we're on to the uh, church of Thyatira. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yes. Wow. We, I, I better speed up here. Okay, it's 25 kilometers or 16 miles from the Aegean Sea. It's in the modern day town of Bergama in the province of Izmir in Turkey. Wow. So Thyatira, the angel to the church in Thyatira writes, these are the words of the Son of God. There we see clearly in the Bible, the words are of the Son of God whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds. Remember that word again, deeds your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. So they were increasing in their deeds or works, if that's the way you want to, another word you want to use, or their actions, their love and faith and in service. So uh, they were, so that's a good point. Uh, the Son of God gave them some bonus points there for doing the right thing. But then verse 20 says, Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. My God, this happens a lot, this eating of food sacrificed to idols. Father, we repent of all this idolatry. Just break it off us, Lord God. Cast it out of the body of Christ, Lord God. Let people repent and turn from this evil, wicked way of sexual immorality any idolatry, adultery, fornication, whatever it is, any sexual immorality or perversion, Father, we renounce it. We renounce the spirit of Jezebel. We bind and rebuke it and cast it out in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now, here's the, 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 what will happen to that spirit of Jezebel, which is also called the woman of Jezebel here, even though we've studied before that 
The spirit of Jezebel could be on a man or a woman. It's a spirit. And it says, verse 22, So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely, unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. That's a strong curse right there. My goodness, forgive us, Lord, and help us, Father God, to be free from any Jezebel activity in the church. In Jesus' name. Then all the churches will know that I am he who search, searches the hearts and the minds, and I, were, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds, actions, or works, is what I put in brackets. So again, deeds is the word in the Bible, and you can interpret that whichever way you want. But I'm going to slow down here. I feel like I'm going too fast, and the Holy Spirit is slowing me down. We need to really meditate on the word of God and understand each thing we're reading carefully. I hope, are you all being blessed by this today? Give us some thumbs up, some hearts. We love you. God bless you all. Uh, you, you've been an awesome uh, audience for us for the last year of preaching here at Third Heaven Ministries. And uh, we'd love to see your feedback and your comments. And we're really looking forward to meeting a lot of you in the near future. We're going to have a worship event here very soon on a Friday night, I believe. Um, and Kingdom Revival events in next month. I want to focus on evangelism in September. I see great things going on around the world uh, in the area of evangelism, but we need it right here in our hometown of Canada, in our nation of Toronto, sorry, our nation of Canada, city of Toronto, and all across uh, our, uh, every city in this nation, but also in the U.S. We know we have a lot of American viewers, and we pray for you for revival there as well, and awakening, hallelujah. We know there's been many revivals in the past, but the greatest one is coming, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 20 says, uh, sorry, verse 22. This is what will happen to Jezebel. I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches the hearts and the minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. I don't know why I had to read it the second time, but again, I feel that message had to go across clearly. We have to renounce and not tolerate any of that a counterfeit activity in our churches. Amen? Verse 26. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end. See that? You have to be victorious and do his will to the end. I will give authority over the nations that one will rule them with an iron scepter and will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I have received authority from my father, I will also give that one the morning star Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Praise God. So you see the same pattern you know, that is the, the way the, the, the prophetic word is released to all the churches. Very similar pattern. So we went through four of them so far. There's three more in Revelation chapter 3. Are you enjoying the message today? Praise God. I, I, I'm going to see if I can get through. How much time do we have, Andrea? Can I get through? You're almost at an hour. Almost at an hour. Okay. Church in Sardis, it says, the church, to the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. That's a word to the church today. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. So there are deeds that we need to complete, and if they're unfinished in the sight of God, it's, it's a negative. It's not a positive. So the good thing I love about this coaching mentoring <laughs> uh, prophetic word is that it's showing the strengths and the weaknesses so we can improve on what we're doing wrong. Amen. God is graceful and merciful, and he's showing us even what we need to do differently to get better results. Verse 3, remember therefore what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. Again, there's that same word, repent, change your mindset. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. My God, these are a, a, a stern words of warning. That's why we have to give God all the glory and the honor, because he loves us enough to give us a stern warning to get it right and be on the right track. Verse 4, yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Praise God. Um, Christ holds the whole world in the palm of his hands, 
and it says here he holds the seven spirits of God. That is amazing. Some people are trying to figure out where to put Christ Jesus down in the timeline of history. Meanwhile, he's determining and deciding where each man will spend eternity. I love that quote I read on social media a few weeks ago that, you know, Christ is not a prophet only. He's not a king only. He's not a priest only. He fulfilled all three offices, but his true title is Son of God. He is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and he's much greater than any prophet. No prophet was ever ascribed these kind of terminologies and names. The Word of God, the Spirit of God, the uh, one with the Father. So again, there's only one way to be saved. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Christ. And let me continue on here to the, the church in Philadelphia, verse 7. Praise God. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. Again, there's the deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no man can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, my goodness. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. So again, there's going to be a repentance. It says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. So this end time trial that's coming upon the inhabitants of the earth is to test them. And it says, the, uh, I will keep you from the hour of trial to the church in Philadelphia. So Smyrna and Philadelphia are the only two churches that great, get a great report. All the other five are not so good, but they had some positive, some negative. And then it says here, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem, praise God. The new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. So there's a new name that Christ is going to write on them. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Praise God. Now this church of Philadelphia was one of the original seven, but today... It's interesting that the city of Philadelphia in the U.S. is a very significant city. It's where you'll find the Liberty Bell and the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were signed there. Um, and so it's very significant. So the city of Philadelphia, it's the, the, uh, the, most, the, the largest city in, in Pennsylvania, 10th largest city, I believe, in America, 1.5 million people, called the City of Brotherly Love. Now, where did that name come from? Because in the Greek, Philadelphia means... Um, uh, basically uh, uh, phileos I believe is the word it's the Greek word which means uh, like a friendship type of love and we'll get into another study on that that there's agape love eros love, phileo love and, and one more if you remember Andrew the fourth one there's four different types of love and the, fr the friendship love or brotherly love is phileos uh, it was penned by William Penn uh, a Quaker I believe in 1682 and Philadelphia was also immortalized uh, 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 through the um, Sylvester Stallone Rocky movie in the steps of the, the Museum of Art. We were there and, and not, not too many years ago, and uh, uh, it, it's just that uh, the triumphal run up the steps should give some inspiration today. But Philadelphia has a very positive report, and praise God that there's one last church here, and I'll make it very quick for time here. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. We've read this many times before. And uh, how many of you like iced coffee? I, I, I'm a nice coffee drinker, praise the Lord. And uh, Andrea likes uh, hot, very hot, warm coffee. Uh, sorry, yeah, hot or cold, but no one likes lukewarm coffee, and this is what Christ is saying to the church today, specifically Laodicea, but even all the churches today. Because some of us are lukewarm, he's going to spit us out of his mouth. Forgive us, Lord. We repent of lukewarmness, Lord God. Help us to return to our first love and get fired up again, Lord God. Wake us up, Lord God. 
shake us up, do whatever it takes, Lord God, to get us back on fire for the kingdom of God and to preach your good news message and get souls saved for the kingdom. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Verse 17. We're almost finished here. Thank you for your patience. I hold in here, but this is awesome. I love the word of God. It says, you say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. My goodness, this is talking about spiritual poverty. And, 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 and uh, there's five things there. Wretchedness, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I mean, this is a harsh rebuke. But it says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. My God, Father, cleanse the body of Christ from spiritual blindness. Let the uh, scales fall off the eyes, Lord, and let us open up the eyes of our heart that we can see, Father, and truly worship you in spirit and in truth. Whew. Thank you, Lord. This is one of the most uh, strongest rebukes I've seen out of all the seven churches. And then finally, in verse 19, he says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So again, that shows that Christ did love the church regardless of what condition they were in. He loves the people. God hates sin, but he loves the sinner, which is the people. But he, we're actually supposed to be saints once you're born again. So Christ loves everyone, but he cannot tolerate the sin. He, it's repulsive to him because uh, he's holy. Praise God. So this is, so be earnest and repent. So because he loves us, he's, he's giving us some discipline and some rebuke so that we will be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. Hallelujah. This is the greatest salvation call right now, that Christ is standing at the door and knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Praise God. That is such a powerful promise. Whoever has ears, let him hear with the Spirit says to the churches, praise God, hallelujah. That's the best salvation call that we can end on here. The church of, uh, of Thyatira, is that right? Yeah, the la no, sorry, la Laodicea, the very last church. Andrea, would you like to do a salvation prayer for anyone watching today? Or else I'll do it. Father, we thank you. You ready? Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, yes, we thank you, Lord, that we come in humility today, repenting of any disobedience, Anywhere where we have fallen short, Lord God, you said, Lord, that everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. And that's why we need to come in repentance and humility and confess our sin one to another, Lord, and to you, Lord God, that we may be forgiven, cleansed, and purified, Lord. So I pray anyone watching today, you will open up the door of your heart because Christ is knocking. Just let him in. Say, I open up the, the door of my heart, Lord God, and come on in. Have your way. Take control and transform my life to say, Father, I come to you in, in, in repentance and, 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 and ask you to forgive me of all my sin, all my transgression, all my iniquity. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for purifying me. I receive your spirit, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. I receive your spirit within me and ask you to baptize me Thank you, Lord God. Fill me, baptize me, and fill me to overflowing. I declare that I am born again. To say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Son of God, that he went to the cross, died, was buried, and on the third day he rose again. I thank you, Lord God, that you have allowed me to experience eternal life through the finished work of the cross in Calvary. I receive your grace, your salvation. And I declare that I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I give you all the praise, and glory, and honor in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you all. We're going to take an offering here in the sanctuary. If you'd like to support us, Third Heaven Ministries, you can go to donate at thirdheaven.org is the email address. Or just go to our website, www.3rdheaven.org. And we want to take this gospel message right across. Thank God for social media. It's been awesome. But we want to pray also for some helpers here. Father, we pray for the local pastor here in Woodbridge. We pray, pray for a worship leader. We pray for uh, a social media. Uh, and no experience necessary. We'll train you on whatever you need to do. Father, anyone watching today, just touch them by your fire, Lord God, or whatever it is you need to do, Lord. Speak to them, Lord. Touch the hearts. That's it. God is saying just prepare your hearts. He needs laborers. That's the work of the kingdom of God. 
It's not, if you just receive salvation just for yourself, it's a little bit selfish. And that's what God is trying to get us away from the selfish mindset and to be selfless. That's why Christ was a true servant leader. He, he modeled servant leadership where he washed the feet of his disciples. And, and he did so many things to show that he came not to be served or to worship, but to serve us. My God, that's why we freely worship him and freely love him back. Because he reached out to first, he came to our level and, and came to minister to us. That's what it means to be a labor in the kingdom. It says the harvest is great, but the labors are few. God is looking for labors, and there's eternal rewards and, and for all eternity, and also here in the kingdom of God on earth. So I'm challenging everyone if you feel a calling in your life, uh, give us a call. We're looking for helpers, for labors to do the work of the kingdom of God in these last days. And the world is waiting. We have so many nations waiting for us to go there and have crusades, conferences. And uh, you're all welcome to be here, trained up. We're an apostolic prophetic a center to train you up and send you out into the world. Uh, and, and even in your own neighborhood, we God, there's amazing work that needs to be done right here uh, in our own city, in our own community. God bless you all. We'll see, we're, uh, we'll see you next Sunday. And we look forward to uh, uh, being in contact with you soon. Shalom.